What's up everyone, my name is Mike and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking VV gems and having enough gems in your wallet for those gem squeezes to be able to pick up those collectibles that you really wanted but couldn't get earlier. Let's get into this. So the reason why I wanted to bring up this topic and talk about my experience on the VV platform with this is that I've made this mistake a couple of times now and most recently with this gem squeeze that went on for an extended period of time here, perhaps we're gonna see a U-turn in the market on collectibles and seeing their prices really start to rise moving forward from this golden moments drop that saw the Valentine's Day Lady in the Tramp and Daisy and Donald Duck. I feel like the market has been holding out for big news. This may have been the big news, but I'm sure we're going to be getting some big news even coming closer to weekend drops, which we typically see those big drops being. Ultimately, I think if people are holding out for these big announcements and when these big announcements do actually come, I think we're going to see a sustained level of these floor prices for collectibles. And I think we're going to see a lot of volatility with collectibles that don't have the FA or FE stamp with them. This is why my strategy is always to go for those FA and FEs because they typically see less volatility when we're going through these gem squeezes. For example, the Golden Moment Series 1 I have the Iron Man and I've been keeping an eye on multiple others as I start to make moves to purchase another one. And we haven't seen major drops in these. Maybe a little bit when some of the objects like the Pizza Planet truck, the Avengers logo, Mickey's Sorcerer hat, when these went from FA to FE, they dropped a little bit in price. And then during this latest gem squeeze leading up to this Valentine's Day drop, they dropped a little bit more in their floor price. But the remainder of the golden moments stayed fairly consistent consistent and didn't see as much volatility when it comes to other collectibles in the market. Still, some of my collectibles that are FA, I definitely saw them drop quite a bit and they're sitting at the lowest I've seen them in a long time. And I haven't seen a rebound with these and I don't know when to expect one in the foreseeable future. I was really lucky to have exited out of my position on my Marvel Mighties, taking the profits of those. But then I used those profits and I put them into other collectibles and completely filled up my vault in relation to how many gems I had. Now that's a dangerous thing to do especially when these aren't collectibles that I saw holding for the long term these are collectibles that I saw making moves towards them having catalysts that I really thought would really skyrocket the price for example I picked up Catwoman and this is leading up to the Batman movie I'm hoping that this is a mind-blowing movie that people love it people fall in love with Catwoman especially since it's going to be an origin story for the character and perhaps shortly after the movie we'll see a another movie being announced for that Batman universe with Robert Pattinson and maybe even a Catwoman spin-off movie from that. So I'm hoping for big things with that Catwoman character. That being said, there's other collectibles that I definitely have my eye on right now that I'm really wanting to get, but I really can't purchase and sell off these collectibles that I've accumulated at a floor price that is lower than what I purchased them at, or it's difficult, like for example with my Deadpool, which is still profitable at the floor price it's sitting at, but it's about half what we've seen it before. So even though I'm profitable on the Deadpool, it's difficult to pull the trigger on it and sell it for the profit that I'm at when I've seen it so much higher just a couple of weeks ago. I could sell my Wonder Woman off that I got on the drop, make about double 100% profit on it, but just a week ago or so, I could have sold it for at least a 200% return on investment up to about 300%. Especially since she's not an FA collectible, I'm likely selling it and pulling the trigger on that in the near future, especially to accumulate some more gems in my wallet. Which brings me to the point of this. It's important to keep a reserve in your wallet of gems that you're willing to allocate to collectibles that you want to keep for the longer term. You should know a percentage that you want to keep in your wallet to be able to pick up these collectibles during a gem squeeze, especially this gem squeeze that we've seen been going on for about two weeks now. As soon as that announcement went out about the Daisy Duck and Donald Duck, as well as the Lady and the Tramp golden moments, things started selling off like crazy and you could have got in really well on a lot of collectibles that you probably have your eye on. Even the Daisy Duck and Donald Duck as well as Lady and the Tramp 
golden moments collectibles are sitting really low and those would be great things to pick up. This is not my advice to you. This is my advice that I'm giving myself and looking at and trying to find deals in this market. I can't believe that Daisy Duck and Donald Duck currently are sitting below Wally, especially with the popularity of those two characters. Lady and the Tramp, I feel like will go up just a little bit, but I see that Daisy and Donald Duck really reaching much, much higher than where it is currently. Other collectibles like the Avengers logo, I want to get to be able to complete my set with my Iron Man. There's other Batman collectibles that I also have my eye on leading up to the release of the Batman movie on March 4th. So there's all these collectibles that I'm thinking about and I'm looking at my gem wallet and I just don't have enough to deploy on these collectibles and make moves on these collectibles unless I sell at a price that I don't want to sell my collectibles at. But it's getting to a point where we just need one more big collectible dropping and we're going to see even more prices drop. So I want to time it just right to be able to sell off my collectibles now and to take the profits that I've made on them in order to use them on the collectibles that I really want to get long term. It's important to have a strategy with your short term collectibles and realizing the short term catalysts that could come up to raise the popularity of those characters and to sell off on them. I've done that with Catwoman and we're only a few weeks out from realizing whether or not that collectible is going to rise or not because of that catalyst. But then there's longer term plays that I probably should not have done like buying two Ben Riley Spider-Mans at the price that I did because it's dropped so much more since then. That's just this game when you're treating it almost as an investment as opposed to a collection because you're not going to be right 100% of the time. I've been lucky with my Marvel Mighties. I've been lucky with other characters that I've bought and sold. My Deadpool is sitting nicely. The Wonder Woman and the Iron Man I got off the drop so those aren't her me at all. It's these other purchases that are kind of holding me back right now that I wish I had those gems available to me to be able to make more moves on longer term items, especially right now where the floor prices are at with these. It'd be really nice to make some moves as I see it now and especially if there's another big announcement coming up. So that's my advice to you. Have a percentage allocated of your portfolio in gems in your wallet to be able to make the moves that you want to make when prices come down. It's not the end of the world at the end of the day. Day. Ultimately, I think we'll see prices rise and drop and rise and drop throughout the lifetime of VV until it really reaches a mass audience and we see less volatility in the market. And especially as VV drops more and more collectibles, that's going to start to really dilute how many gems are going out to which collectibles and we'll really see stabilized floor prices on a lot of these collectibles. I'm counting on that. So I'm really hoping to use this plan to keep a certain percentage of gems in my wallet at any given time to really capitalize on these gem squeezes when they occur and when they happen. I'd love to know if you've run into the same problem with this. Have you struggled with keeping gems in your reserve wallet because you keep on seeing deals, you keep on purchasing, but that market keeps going down? Do you have a percentage of your portfolio allocated to holding gems in your wallet to make sure that you have them ready just in case that market keeps dropping? Are you comfortable with purchasing more and more gems as you see the market continue to drop because you're bullish on Vivi in the long term? What is your reasoning behind all of this? Please leave it in the comment section below. Let's start a discussion on this and your thought process about what you're doing on Vivi and why you're doing it. Hit the like button if you like this information that I dropped here and subscribe if you want more VV content. Thank you so much for watching.